thank you for inviting me here. And I was invited to share with you our uh, experiences in uh, value chain partnership or value chain development. So can we move to the first slide? Well, as a background and to share with you, the Upland Marketing Foundation was an NGO. Uh, I'll read my script. <laughs> acting as a marketing intermediary for agricultural and agri-based products from rural communities. Uh, UMFI started actually as a program, uh, the Upland Marketing Program of the Philippine Business for Social Progress and the Upland NGO Assistance Committee. And uh, the UNA uh, was a partnership of social development and academic institution assisting NGOs aiming to serve upland communities effectively. And uh, when it was conceived, the upland marketing program identified three strategies, that is for community-based, uh, community uh, business enterprises. One is the first one is marketing, information, dissemination. Second is training. And the third is market engaging. However, under the third strategy, organizations of small producers were linked to potential buyers of their produce. However, it was soon assessed that the linkages usually did not go further than the first transaction because of the fact that community-based enterprises were either late in their deliveries, brought poor quality products, and delivered below the ordered amount. So, the community business enterprise capacities were uh, below par or not meeting up to market standards. But despite this, the communities, in spite of this, the communities were expecting higher returns. But however, the buyers were frustrated and disappointed. So this prompted the program to play a more active role in market linkaging process by acting as a go-between. Uh, between the community-based enterprise and the market. So with this uh, active participation role, the Upland Marketing Program tried to ensure that market requirements m were met by the community business enterprises, while also trying to make sure that the CBEs got fair economic returns. So with this situation back then, uh, uh, it was, uh, it, as, as a strategy, it um, uh, developed mainstream market because in, in this particular market, it was back then uh, would provide higher mar uh, returns or higher income for community enterprises. Next slide, please. The Upland Marketing, thus the Upland Marketing was created and uh, incorporated in November 2000 from the Upland Marketing Program. And it was one of the few NGO initiatives that had made significant inroads in the mainstream market. So when we say mainstream market, these are the big retailers, such as SM, Pure Gold, Shopwise, Rustans. And working on the theme, Bridging the Great Market Divide, UMFI had worked over the last decade to assist community-based enterprise by adding value to their produce and bringing this to the marketplace. In, UM, in recent years, uh, Upland Marketing had also given increased attention to helping CBEs penetrate the markets in their local areas. And Upland Marketing saw that the CBEs as key factors in local economic development. And uh, our primary stakeholders are uh, basically community-based enterprise in sustainable development, such as for, uh, we have sectors in partnership uh, in the indigenous communities, agrarian reform communities, coastal communities, and micro small enterprises um, in developing their capacities in sustainable agriculture, use of appropriate farming technology, organic farming, and uh, non-destructive and environment-friendly practices. And we also have partners in EBITDA capacity building for indigenous communities. We have done assistance or capacity building for the uh, non-timber forest products to achieve sustainable for forest and resource management. Next slide. Now these are our community uh, 
base enterprise partners that we have cultivated over the years. There's Callahan Educational Foundation. They are based in Mero Vizcaya. This is a indigenous, a community-based enterprise or indigenous communities where they have the mountain fresh guava jams and jellies, and it is distributed in selected stores here in Metro Manila and uh, outlying provinces. And we have the Pecuari Pecuaria Development Cooperative, who is our uh, CB partner, uh, supplying us with organic uh, red rice. And Cooperativa Likas ng Nueva Ecija, based in Nueva Ecija, where they supply us, and we market their white and brown rice here in Metro Manila. We also have a partnership with Cooperativa Santo Nino for brown rice, Sultan Kudrat Muscovado Farmers Corporation for Muscovado Sugar, and recently, or just recently, uh, last year, we have uh, um, we are now supporting Linabu Agriculture Multipurpose Cooperative in distributing their cocoa sugar. I would like to share to you the vision uh, statement up of Upland Marketing from the last decade. So it's serving community-based enterprises by providing mechanisms for local economic development in marginalized communities through the generation of income and employment opportunities that are anchored on the processing, value addition, and marketing of local materials into high value and marketable products to local and mainstream markets. Medyo <laughs> mahaba. But we, we, we operate, operationalize this vision uh, and I will share, be sharing with you in the next slides. We have identified when as I mentioned earlier, um, we upland marketing played an active role uh, and uh, active role between the CBEs and the markets. But we have identified uh, primary barriers to trade in the area of CBE capacity. There was uh, concerns regarding the pro product marketability. So because uh, community-based enterprise don't have the access to uh, valuable market research for quality standards they are uh, unaware uh, of the uh, stringent requirement for consumers for high quality and uh, they are not too much familiar with the uh, standards the standard sets for good mark uh, GMP or the HACCP. For supply capacity there's also a problem with regards to volume uh, we have experiences with community-based enterprise where we have already engaged or we already introduced their products to the market but when it was displayed on the shelves the problem is that they were unable to supply the, the necessary volume for the, uh, for the market. Then there's also product pricing and difficulty in securing permits, licenses and taxes. Now also there's also the uh, there's also the barrier for trade or difficulty with regards to distribution infrastructure and logistics support. Most of them are located in outlying provinces, so it would be very much costly for them to distribute their products here in Metro Manila. They would be have they would they uh, have limitations with regards to product transport, product warehouse, red redistribution tracking, and trade maintenance. And market trade perceptions and policies. Of course, there's the uh, uh, problem on poor quality. Uh, for example, we have uh, we have this product from Mindoro where uh, it was produced by the IPs, and when we uh, it's a um, juice concentrate, and when we introduce it to supermarket buyers, when they saw that it's from the, from uh, these communities, they have that perception that this this is a uh, poor quality. So as, a, as an assistance, we, we, we did some relabeling product, uh, relabeling product repackaging and we helped them also to improve their manufacturing uh, practices. Unreliable supply and it's, and when you engage in mainstream market, it's very, the entry costs and fees are very expensive. And the terms and conditions of payments is much longer. So that would also be a big difficulty for community-based enterprise. Uh, delivery, then supermarkets would also requiring 100% returns on 
on bad stocks. These are stocks that are damaged or packaging, so it's damaged. And of course, aside from that, we have we. It's not only limited to delivering it to supermarket; it has to be refilled. So, this is also a concern for the community-based enterprise. So, we have identified these trade barriers, and Upland Marketing Foundation provided the uh, the uh, bridge to overcome this trade barrier, as shown in the next slide. So, we we had ser we served as a bridge for the community-based enterprises. As I mentioned, the primary trade barriers is really a big, great market divide for them. So we have developed the market and we have given them access to markets, especially the mainstream markets here in Metro Manila. <coughs> ah, can we go back forward? Ah, okay. This is our uh, enterprise development framework or mo model where UMFI serves as a go-between or intermediary for community-based enterprise. So UMFI focuses on its core competency, links, links up with partner, partners, and outsource ancillary services so that we can focus on our uh, competency and we, we, we sort of uh, provide the assistance in terms of technology for product development, bis business and management systems. Uh, we also link uh, community-based enterprise to financial institutions or financial, our financial institution partners. And we provide the market industry and information intelligence for the community-based enterprise so that they can uh, continuously or continuously develop or upgrade their products. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So aside from performing market intermediation, UMFI, as I mentioned the vision before, we have operational, operationalized our vision, uh, mission statement to ensure uh, to provide uh, production to improve uh, community community business enterprise capacity, and uh, beyond this, UMFI had adopted value chain management as a major strategy that provided an anchor for enterprise development. Malabo in slide, but this is how we conduct a uh, appraisal on community based enterprises. So there, there are three stages where we conduct the appraisal. One is start up, then build up, and take off commercial stage. In these various stages, we have integrated packages of assistance. So it differs from or between the stages. For startup, this, these are CBEs that we define that is starting from bottom up. So the interven intervention or capa capacity building is aimed at um, establishing their, their uh, or strengthening their organization and their capacity. So, but when if they, for, for the partic for products that were developed during the startup stage, the market uh, engagement is limited only to uh, local markets, fair trade, changi, and uh, uh, small stores. Now, if the CBE have already progressed from start up to build up, we also have sets of integrated package of assistance uh, to further strengthen or to, to further strengthen their organization, their production um, facilities, their production capacity, and uh, I mean they could graduate from the small markets to to bigger markets such as the mainstream retailers and. Uh, Institutional and uh, uh, super, uh, supermarket institutional uh, customers. Now, for the takeoff commercial scale, these are the uh, very established uh, community-based ba enterprise. Where uh, I mean, the package of assistance would be much lesser as compared to the build-up and start-up stage because they are more stable. They've already been engaged for a certain number of years. Their capacities, capacities have already been developed, and there's this opportunity for them to explore uh, bigger markets, uh, both domestic and export. Now, in this uh, 
in this um, uh, framework or in this appraisal, there's, we have partnership or facility. Uh, partnerships with facilities or capacity building partnerships uh, that provide the, uh, the packages of assistance for these uh, community-based enterprises during these development stages. Now this is our uh, value chain uh, uh, model where uh, UMFI, Upland Marketing Foundation, uh, uh, actively engages or it provides, these are the value added inputs along the chain for CBE so that their products would be competitive, more competitive and would provide them uh, ensure lesser costs, provide them more margins. So in the area of research and development, we provide them assistance for the improvement of their products to focus on markets and focus on specific industries. Input sourcing, we, uh, we have helped them out in technology, raw materials, materials and production inputs. For production st standards, we have shared with them, with some communities, uh, quality control standards, costing, pricing for their products, skills, uh, upgrading of the skills of their uh, organization, members, system and structure. And for distribution, we have provided them or opened the market for them. And we have, we have opened especially the biggest, a big market, the retail chain for them, uh, and provided logistics support and deliveries. And for the servicing or con to ensure the sus sustainability and servicing of this product, we also do the selling collection for them, channel maintenance and promotion. And most important, of course, is the customer feedback. Especially nowadays, customers are very discriminating, so uh, at Upland Marketing, we are, uh, we are uh, right now more consumer or uh, more consumer focus or consumer centric. If I will be showing to you slides before of products that we have developed and is continuously upgrading and development because of the changing uh, consumer preferences. I'd like to share to you the, uh, the evolution of, of Upland Marketing. From 2001 to 2003, we experimented as intermediary for CBEs with the mainstream market. So we built an organization for distributorship in consumer trade. We developed product lines. Uh, we were limited to upland, upland products. Now we have expanded to lowland and coastal community products. With, yeah, thank you. We also established partnership with SMEs and prospects for organic rice. In 2000, from 2004 to 2006, we identified, we found out that there was a growing preference for healthy products, so we positioned, our, uh, we positioned it to uh, grab these opportunities. So there was an emergence of demand for organic rice and muscovado sugar. And from 2007 to 2010, we focused on value chain management in key economic subsectors and local development. Earlier, I shared with you that we were providing assistance to communities to develop products. So in the process, we were developing uh, each product for each communities. Now it's more costly and more costly, more difficult to, to engage it into the market. So we are now focusing on value chains where there's a possibility for an established value chain. We, get, we can invite uh, value chain suppliers so that they can be a part of the value chain. Now, these are the products that we have developed through the years. Uh, from during the early years, from 2003, this was the packaging, and uh, eventually we have improved it, and we're still continuing to improve it because of uh, consumer cha changes in preferences or, or consumer uh, taste. Uh, example of high fiber us, that was the previous packaging, uh, this is the current packaging. Now uh, this is our, we introduced the black rice and we label it and branded it as forbidden rice. And uh, the red rice, the polished red rice we introduced as pink rice and our position is that it is better than white rice. And we're doing some research and development on organic rice flour, but we have not yet launched that. We're probably be exploring that. For muscovado sugar, we, uh, 
and since there was a growing demand for muscovado sugar because it was perceived by consumers as healthy, so we come up with the brand and packaging. That was the old packaging, this is the new packaging, and we're still developing it. And we have our own in-house brand that would hopefully, if we, have, we can develop this and it becomes a strong brand, would benefit muscovado farmers and probably in the future coffee far farmers. And this is what I mentioned, we, we recently uh, assisted Linabu for cocoa sugar. So we're marketing it right now in supermarket chains, cocoa sugar available in sachet in package, 200 gram package. These are also products under research and development. Yeah, also likewise. These are the, the labels that we have done to help, examples of labels that we're doing to help the CBEs. These are our in-house brands, but we've also helped them develop their own brands and labels. These are the market tops. I mean, I'm sure you're aware of SM, Pure Gold, you already know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, an overview of our current operations. We've established partnership with 110 communities nationwide, but there are roughly around eight uh, strong partnerships, and we have already distributed to 300 retail outlets nationwide, and we've enjoyed nine years of sustained growth with 171 million of CB products traded, mostly in mainstream market. And we enjoyed for the our primary stakeholders. They've enjoyed an 89% in farmers' gross income, and increasing community partners. Previously, it was one. Now we've expanded to 10 CBEs, which is as I mentioned earlier the value chain model. Where, and for Muscovado, we have one CB suppliers expanded to six CB suppliers. It's it's already becoming that. We, we came up with the in-house brand for it to become a vehicle for community products to market their products through this brand. Now, we have been engaged in uh, value chain development programs. We have facilitated the, uh, both agricultural loans and for trading and milling operations uh, from UMFI, but in later years, we, we partnered with uh, Federation of People's Sustainable Development Cooperative. And we, assist, we are in the process of assisting getting them organic certification uh, in, view, in view of the coming up, I mean the organic law. So we're, we're preparing for this. And we're over, also overlooking the milling process and to ensure product quality. We're, we're regularly uh, communi communicating and dialoguing with our uh, CB suppliers with regards to their products, with regards to products quality and standards. Now recently we have tried, we tried to capture the entire UMFI value chain in this uh, chart or illustration. There's two uh, facets to UMFI, there's the development and business side. The development side, they're the one that interacts or engages with the community business enterprise, both link and CBEs, donors, LGUs, academe, government agencies, microfinance, and other development agencies. And the business sites, they're the one that uh, engages the market for supermarket, hotel, restaurants, industrial, and exports. Now we have crafted a uh, vision for the next five years, and it's much shorter compared to the previous vision. So we're looking at to become a globally recognized marketing organization with a value chain approach focused on building sustainable business based and community based enterprises and our mission statement developer of valuable sustainable value chains for community based enterprise provider of affordable access to appropriate technology stable financial resources and growing markets to community based enterprise provider of high quality and healthy products to consumers advocate of fair trade the whole value chain and complements the mandates and advocacies of the members of the government structure and provides a, where, a rewarding career to its employees. And our strategies for the next five years would be further product development, differentiation, and market development, especially the underdeveloped markets like the export market and institutional market. And we're also, de we are strengthening and developing existing value chains and new value chains. 
we are uh, a part of the strategy is to tap alliances with community-based enterprise and partners that could provide or capacity builder partners that could provide the uh, assistance to CBEs we, you, utilizing their res resource and expertise and we we'll continue to tap financial resources for CBE capacity building and we're also looking into the possibility of opening up the value chain players as direct stakeholders to UMFI. This is, uh, I'd like to share to you the organ new structure that we have in line with the vision uh, we have crafted.